Yes, everyone, welcome to Tottenham. Alejo Valise, he's going to be joining us very, very soon. I believe he completed his medical just the other day. I'm recording this now on Monday to welcome him here to the Tottenham Hotspur from the Irish Hotspur. But everybody, before we kind of dive into what he could bring to us, do me a favor here. Do what Dave likes to ask of you in the very beginning of these. Smash that like button for us if you do enjoy these videos. And as well, leave a comment down below whether you think Alejo Valise is the right signing, whether you think he could succeed here, and whether you think this is a good idea to sort of beef up some of our younger talent here at this club and if he's kind of the right gamble to take. But we're going to start first kind of with sort of the, the details on the deal. It has been completed, I think, just sort of today. As I'm kind of recording this now, I've gotten another sort of confirmation here from Fabrizio Romano. He is 19 years old. He turns 20 in September. This deal is uh, for 15 million euros plus add-ons. It's going to be a five-year deal as well, so it does show some type of confidence in him to kind of come into the team into the future. He's not going to be going back on loan to Rosario Central. That could be kind of linked to the fact that, you know, Harry Kane's future maybe is still in doubt for some Spurs fans and as well as maybe the club. But also, too, maybe Postacoglu wants to get a good glimpse of him, doesn't want to just send him back immediately, wants to have a proper look at him before he makes really a decision on the kid's future. He's actually from the same club as uh, Giovanni Lo Celso, that being, you know, Rosario Central. And this could be a bit of an Agent Geo type situation. Who knows? A bit of a redemption arc, if you will, when he's kind of earning back his loyalty, kind of earning back his sort of love for this club. This could be maybe a, a signing that he's maybe tipped to the club or in some way, has kind of pushed it along for us in a way that we were able to kind of seal him maybe before other players or uh, should I say other clubs were able to do so. He is right footed. He's very tall, 1.86 meters, six foot one, in fact, and he is just the big number nine. I don't think he's going to be playing anywhere else on the pitch as a left winger or as a right winger. He's a big, tall striker. And in three years at Rosario Central, I think since the age of like 16 or 17, he's been playing there. In his first season, he only played around four matches, around 29 minutes in total, did not grab any goals and assists. But the following season, I think he was around 17 or 18 years old. He grabbed 20 starts in that season, got six goals in that, no assists there though. And then in this most recent season, I think when he's, I think around 18 or 19, 23 matches played, 22 starts, 11 goals and zero assists. And he did believe there's only one penalty there in all of the goals that I did mention. He scored some goals against also uh, some uh, international sides when he was playing, I think for Javier Mascherano's sort of under 20 team. I heard that they actually kind of sort of underperformed in some sort of manner, but I believe he's kind of stood out in a way that you know, kind of sort of showed that, you know, despite the team maybe underperforming, he was still able to grab some goals for them. Uh, definitely a big, tall striker who looks like I would say his best attribute is sort of, you know, in the air right now. I'm not really too sure, you know, just because I've really not heard much about him or really am not much of an expert really at all on sort of the Argentinian league or even much of the South American leagues. But from what I can tell from the highlights and everything that have been, you know, uh, put out there on YouTube and the uh, and on, the, on Twitter, etc. I can tell that he's just a really, you know, comfortable striker in the air. That's probably his best attribute right now. Of course, I think other attributes maybe will show to us when we actually get a real seeing eye test on him. But from what I can tell, for a guy of his age, he really knows how to rise in the air. He actually knows how to be able to guide his headers as well. He has also a bit of that sort of power on it as well. He's really able to, you know, nod it down into the ground or kind of use a bit of, you know, much more kind of neck power, if you will, than kind of maybe other players can when trying to rise up and, you know, try to, to nod it in. I do feel like, though, he has uh, some poacher tendencies as well, which is good to see. You know, again, for such a young player, you know, it's nice to see a guy who's kind of positionally aware in the box, you know, looks comfortable right standing in the box some players don't look very comfortable when kind of roaming around you know the defenders whereas he kind of does at least in the Argentinian league he does and then I think he is uh, quite strong and you know looks like he's a, a pretty big guy for uh, someone his age and has no problem it looks like at least in the Argentinian league from what we can tell from the highlights and everything sort of throwing his body into players and kind of engaging in the physical duels which I'm a big fan of I'm a big tall I'm a big fan of a big tall sort of strikers big sort of brutes of strikers I can't really say other you know much other than really what I've just described when it comes to what he could bring or what type of player he is what i can say though is that there are a lot of players right now that are coming out of south america and it seems like spurs have been a bit slow on sort of this trend you know buying some of this talent you know out of the the south american leagues and we already do have a bit of a history of buying argentinian players so this doesn't really come at much of a surprise that sort of uh spurs have come after 
you know, maybe an Argentinian talent. I do see a lot of Brazilian talent seems like going across Europe at the moment. And so it's good to see sort of Spurs engaging at least in these sort of kind of South American leagues and trying to find the younger talent for the future. I would say too, though, is that I feel like, you know, recently at least, you know, these sort of bigger, taller sort of type strikers, they seem to be going for kind of like big fees these days. Then maybe because it's a far more technical kind of, you know, uh, game nowadays, maybe also a bit more mobile where strikers can't just sort of kind of just stand in the same position and just kind of get it launched up to them. Like I kind of want it to be, you know, I do uh, enjoy that type of four, four, two kind of knock it long type of style from time to time. But it is kind of, I think, moved on from that, you know, football, especially more to the kind of top of the team, you know, top of the league type teams and to play that sort of style. So what I would say is maybe he's a guy that's, you know, is just sort of being, you know, bought for a decent fee because these sort of big, tall strikers that can play maybe in a more progressive, you know, type system are sort of harder to come by. And I feel like, you know, it's good to always have also that kind of like that counteract or, you know, that different option, that guy who can come off the bench and be a bit different to, you know, your other type of striker that might be a bit quicker and might be a guy that prefers to kind of be, you know, one that running behind. And he's sort of a different option, somebody that you can kind of, you know, get a hit up to as well as kind of be more of a, a box type presence. So I think this is definitely, you know, a good signing, at least, you know, on the paper of what I can kind of say that the big tall strikers seem to be going at the big fees these days. Uh, but I definitely see this as a signing of the future. Um, I do feel like 15 million is definitely a pretty decent investment. So we'll see how this will go. And I do feel like this is an interesting one because what does this say to Dane Scarlett? What does this say to uh, Troy Parrott? What does this say to Jamie Donnelly uh, as well? You know, Lancashire, I think, is also a striker that was brought in recently. You have Juden Suits Up Bell, who just came in uh, from Chelsea, too. So what does that really say to the other sort of talented? forwards at the club is that a good thing like is it just sort of the more the merrier i actually saw kind of jamie donnelly's father even tweet that the other day when kind of you know sort of asked about you know what does this say to some of the other younger talented forwards that we have in the academy at the club and he just kind of said the more the merrier you know the more talent there is you know the more competition there is kind of the better it sort of makes all these players and at the end of the day i feel like not all of them are going to make it but you could say that this uh, this could sort of help Spurs, right, be able to, uh, you know, sell on some of these guys, at least for pretty decent fees compared to what uh, maybe we did in the past where we kind of went for the younger, hungrier players, which I think is definitely something you should still sort of kind of keep intact. Uh, we weren't able to kind of sell on, I think, as many of our younger talent for kind of the big fees like you look at with Chelsea and as well as what you look at with Man City. Man City just seemed to be selling players for 10 million, 15 million sort of all the time now. And I think that's something that Spurs could sort of dabble in at least a little bit or sort of kind of take a page out of their book. And I could see that maybe being the case with all these talented forwards that I just mentioned right there. And this could actually be on the back of sort of Parachichi's sort of kind of change in recruitment style when it comes to the youth department. I think he brought in a lot of different heads that seem to kind of more value bringing in kind of higher, maybe profile sort of talented players that might be, you know, brought in on slightly bigger wages than some of the other you know, kind of talented kids around the academy and just sort of is there to maybe promote a bit more kind of competition and kind of just bring in, you know, just out, you could say just some of the more widely known or maybe kind of more just kind of highly rated, you know, younger talent just to kind of sort of mix things up a little bit more in that academy. And I think that's kind of starting to work out for us. At least it's giving us more of a sense that there are players that could kind of come into this team quite soon if need be. And also as well that we can kind of rely on our academy you know, for the future. And we know that we don't have to consistently, you know, be buying, you know, player after player, you know, every single summer, we can maybe wait, you know, for a Donnelly to come through, we can wait for Lancashire and others uh, to come through. And I think Alejo Valise might be a guy that could probably be seeing the first team a bit sooner than some of the other players that I just mentioned, but all of the merrier. And I think good talent in the forward areas is something that Spurs have always had something that I've always had as sort of a, a fan that, you know, I've gotten used to is always having, you know, very talented forwards to, to pick from. So I guess that's what Spurs are continuing to do here. I get my approval of it. Don't know much about him, but I was able to ramble on and be able to throw kind of different sort of uh, kind of context into this sort of signing. But let me know, everybody, what you think of the signing. Buena suerte to uh, Alejo Valiz y bienvenidos a Tottenham Hotspur. Come on, you Spurs. And in the mighty Ange, we trust. See you, everybody.